Hi, my name is Job Resnan from NUI Galway. You're welcome to this lecture in the series of electrical and electronic engineering topics. Um, today we're going to look at batteries and power. So, so far we've been looking at uh, mobile phones as our devices and uh, the various subsystems within mobile phones. Today we'll have a quick look at a mobile phone battery. Um, in the picture here you can see a typical battery. This is from um, a 3.6 volt um, battery and um, typically the batteries in mobile phones tend to be lithium ion batteries. So they basically have an input and an output. So the output as you can imagine is basically the voltage and the current that it supplies to the um, circuit system in the uh, mobile phone. The input is normally um, when it's in the charging process. And the charging process basically works by um, a constant current is applied to the battery until such time as the voltage in the battery rises to um, what's called an over voltage, basically a battery, a battery voltage that's greater than the rated voltage. So you can see in this picture here, this, um, this battery is supposed to give a voltage of 3.6 volts. And um, typically this, uh, the charging system would charge up this battery um, using a voltage that rises eventually to about 4.2 volts. And when that happens, um, some current flows in the reverse direction in the battery and um, the ions um, from that flow become embedded in the material of the battery, um, which um, during this charge, when the battery is being used, will actually uh, provide a source of current. So often batteries that you will have in your house or um, in various devices will state their capacity in different um, terms. Some few will um, talk about joules, but mainly um, this quantity, which is called milliamps hours, will be used. A milliamp per hour is basically the amount of amps that a battery will provide um, in an hour. So, for example, a typical um, battery you might have, home, uh, have at home will give values such as 1200, 1500, or 1800 milliamp hours. So basically that's, that's a rechargeable battery that will provide um, 1500 milliamps for one hour. You could imagine that if you had some kind of circuit that required um, 250 milliamps, that, that that battery would be able to power it for six hours. And of course you can extrapolate from that. So the question here, and you can think about this yourself, is how much current could a 1500 milliamp battery provide for a day if it, if it was fully charged? So a relevant term for batteries and for um, electronic systems is the amount of power and that's basically the rate at which energy is used by the system. So we are familiar with the term power from um, various devices and from our, um, our, um, our generating stations and so on. And it has different meanings in different contexts. Um, in the, I suppose, more general context, it, you can think of it in terms of um, energy. So it's basically um, I suppose how often, how, how, the amount of time that it takes to use up a certain amount of energy. And uh, the definition here is that it's the amount of energy in joules um, used in a given time of seconds. So if you think of power um, as being um, in terms of um, how much energy is, is used in a given time, um, then we need to think about what energy is. Energy is basically the ability to do work. So work is usually done when the force is moving an object from one place to another. So if we think of um, pushing a table across a room, that requires a certain amount of force to push it, push it across the room. And the work is carried out when that force actually moves the object across the room. And then energy is basically having the ability or the capability to do that work. So knowing that you have some kind of system that will be able to carry out that work, which will move the object from point A to point B. And then Power is an expression of energy, which is the ability to do work in terms of how much energy is used in a, in a given amount of time. Um, you can see our power is measured in watts. The unit symbol is W. So again, we have a quantity symbol P and a unit symbol, which is W. Um, a small note here is that um, power is, um, has a quantity symbol P and a unit symbol of W, but energy um, has a quantity symbol of, of W and it has a unit symbol of J, it's measured in joules. So just um, uh, just to be aware of that, it's a little bit like um, um, uh, charge and current in um, that respect, or sorry, charge and capacitance that respect in that we have some 
um, terms that are uh, have, have the same unit symbol as another term's quantity symbol. So I'll just um, add a note here to the slide to um, have, have a look at that. Okay, another thing to note is that traditionally we think of power in terms of moving an object. So as I mentioned the example earlier on of pushing a table across a room. But um, in electrical circuits, it's a little bit different. We're not moving some kind of object around, um, a physical object that we can um, easily see. In this case, what we're doing is we're using a force to move around an electric current. So in an electric circuit, we, think we can think of power as basically being the um, amount of energy that's used to um, move some electric current around a circuit. Now, you might remember when we talked about voltage and current earlier on, we talked about voltage as being something that's um, sometimes termed as, termed as being an electromotive force. So voltage um, or electromotive force is basically the ability of that voltage to um, move current around a circuit. So when we, when we say something has a certain voltage, that's basically a, a value that's given to the um, ability of that to move an amount of current around a circuit. So in, in our case here, the object is basically electrons, which are being moved around an electric circuit. And the force, in our case, is going to be a voltage or an electromotive force. So what's a watt? Um, we've just seen watt on the previous slide and talked about it being the unit of power. But basically, it's the amount of power when one joule of energy is used for one second. And um, again, the, there's a big relationship between um, watt and joule. So if watt is the amount of joules that are used in a particular amount of time, for example, one watt is one joule um, used for one second, then what's a joule? In electrical terms, um, we can think of it in terms of um, the energy that can be used to move um, electric charge around a circuit. And in, uh, in its definition here, we say that the energy required to move one coulomb through a voltage difference of one volt is equivalent to a joule. So again, you can think of it in terms of we have one coulomb of charge. Remember, it's um, 6.24 by 10 to the power of 18 electrons. We want to move it from point A to point B. And the difference in voltage between point A and point B is one volt. So the energy that will be required to move um, that, uh, that, that charge um, through one volt is going to be one joule. Similarly, we've already said that um, energy is related to power. And we said that um, one watt of power is basically uh, one joule being used for one second. We can also say that energy is required to produce one watt of power for one second, or we can term it as one watt second. So one joule can be thought of as a watt second, just as a watt can be thought of joules used per second. So um, we've talked a lot about watt. Watt, just a little bit of historical background, was a Scottish inventor and a mechanical engineer. Um, he was well known for being one of the pioneers of the Industrial Age, both in Scotland and in the greater United Kingdom. He did some uh, significant improvements to the steam engine, and he also developed a very um, common concept that's used in terms of engines, which is horsepower. Horsepower has a direct relationship to uh, the later term of watts, which was um, named after uh, James Watt. One horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts. Now, in terms of electric power, so we've seen kind of the general definitions of power. We've talked a little bit about how power is related to energy use in uh, time. And that energy is basically the movement of um, charge um, through a certain voltage difference. The electric power in watts has a, um, a relationship to both voltage and current because of that. So we think of current as basically being the amount of charge that's being moved around a circuit in unit time. Then um, basically the current and the voltage um, have a relationship to power. So we can see a definition here for um, power in terms of voltage and current, but it comes back to the fact that um, a charge Q is being moved around um, a circuit in, in, in a certain amount of time, which of course corresponds to current. So the current I passing through a voltage difference of V gives us our definition of power. So power is equal to VI there in the equation. And that's our um, what, what we call Watt's law in terms of power and uh, voltage and current. 
So similarly to how we had um, an Ohm's law triangle, we can come up with a similar um, Watt's law triangle. You can see it here. So if you think of um, the uh, the horizontal line here being a, a divider and the vertical line here being a multiplier, then P is equal to V multiplied by I. Similarly, P divided by V is equal to I, or P divided by I is equal to V. So this is the Watt's Law triangle, and hopefully a useful way for you to remember what what Watt's Law is, P is equal to VI. Now, another common unit of energy used for electrical energy usage um, in Ireland and around the world is what's called the kilowatt hour. And the kilowatt hour is, um, well, I suppose it's, it's almost a, a doubling up of time. If we think of um, energy being um, the... Um, our power being the rate at which energy is being used, so power basically is, is related to energy in terms of the um, time in which energy is used. Kilowatt hour is adding another dimension of time to that. So um, the typical unit of electricity here and in many countries is what's called a kilowatt hour, and we, we refer to it um, here in this country as being a unit. Um, so you can think of a kilowatt hour basically being equivalent to using 1000 watts for a full hour. And, um, if you equate that to the cost of electricity in your country, um, for example, at the moment, um, a, a unit or a kilowatt hour here is um, equivalent to 19 cents, then you can think of how much it actually costs to use electricity for particular applications. So if we think of a, a 50 watt bulb, for example, being used in a house, um, and imagine you had 20 bulbs going at the one time, or if you had some um, smaller bulbs or large bulbs, you can scale it up appropriately. But 20 50 watt bulbs lighting for one hour would basically be uh, 20 by 50, which is 1,000 uh, watts being used in an hour, which is one kilowatt hour. You can think of it as being uh, 19 cents um, being used to do that. Or equivalently, if you had some kind of fan heater, and the fan heater um, fan heaters typically have a, a large power usage. If it was a two kilowatt fan heater, and that was being used for just half an hour, that again would equate to 19 cents, um, or one unit of, le of electricity. So let's have a look at um, power and energy as they relate to um, our mobile phone batteries. And if we take the, um, the battery um, we had earlier on, I imagine it has got a voltage of 3.6 volts, and we're told it has a stored energy of uh, 200 joules. So earlier on we looked at battery um, capacity in terms of milliamp hours. Similarly, you can think of it in terms of the amount of energy that they are able to provide. And in this case, let's imagine that this battery has a nominal stored energy of 200 joules. And our question here is, how long will this battery power a phone if it draws 3 milliamps of current when in operation? So it's drawing quite a small amount of current. And we're wondering how many um, minutes or seconds or hours will it last for if it draws that um, amount of current continuously. You can imagine it's maybe some kind of basic operation where um, maybe it's um, in phone mode or maybe it's uh, just in standby mode. And we're trying to figure out well, how long will it last in, in, in that mode. So we have a certain amount of information here. We have um, a voltage, we have an energy use, and we have a current. So we can probably figure out the power requirements of this, um, of this battery from the fact that we have V and we have I. We have the voltage it's, it provides and we have the current that it's going to draw. And we also know that there's a relationship between power, which can be determined from V and I, and the energy, which is shown here in joules. So Remember the relationship between um, power and energy was in terms of time. So we can figure out the time uh, that this battery will, will actually last for based on these various uh, values we're given here. So one way we can do this, for example, is to use our earlier definition of a joule in terms of watt seconds. So basically um, the amount of watt seconds is equivalent to the, to the amount of joules. So 200 joules basically is 200 watts, watt, watt seconds. We also know that we're going to be operating this battery with um, 3 milliamps of current being drawn. So from our earlier P equals VI, we can determine what the power um, output of this battery is. So 3.6 volts multiplied by 3, that's basically V multiplied by I, is equal to the power P, which is given here in terms of um, uh, uh, watts. And um, we can see that it's equal to 1.08 by 10 to the power of minus 2. Uh, watts or 10, roughly 10, 10 milliwatts. Now, we know basically the capacity of the battery. That's basically how many watts it can provide for how many seconds. And we've determined the power usage of the battery in terms of watts. So we can simply divide the amount of watts into the number of watt seconds to find the number of seconds the battery will run for. 
So if the battery has a capability of 200 joules, which is 200 watt seconds, and we divide that by basically the voltage and the current being drawn, which in this case was 1.08 by 10 to the power of minus 2 watts, we find that um, this battery will run for 18,000 seconds, which if you just convert that to hours, works out to be about 5 hours. So drawing 3 milliamps of current for a battery that has 200 joules, it's a relatively small amount, um, will give us basically 5 hours um, in, in that particular mode of operation. So I'd like you to try this yourself. It's a very um, similar example. Instead, we are given the case of a um, media device and it's using a um, 3.7 volt battery in this case. We're told it has a storage energy of 11,000 joules roughly and we're asked to find out how long it'll play music for if it draws 70 milliamps of current when it's in operation. So in this case we have um, um, more energy and we have also a higher current being drawn and um, I'd like you to try this out yourself, figure out what or how long the, um, the device will play for. Okay, so we've seen um, Watt's law, which is P equals VI. And um, the last time we also had a look at Ohm's law, which was V equals RI. You can see some um, similarities there in the equations and that they both have an expression in terms of V and I. Well, we can actually combine these two um, useful equations into variations. So using uh, Watt's law, which is P equals VI, and using Ohm's law, which is V equals RI, we can come up with some variations on, on Watt's law. So for example, if we rearrange Ohm's law in terms of um, getting expression for V, and we um, insert RI instead of V into uh, Watt's law, you can see here we get the um, part here shown in the, in the middle. So as I said, using the arrangement of um, Ohm's law with uh, V equals RI, we have P is equal to V times I, and V in this case is RI, which works out to be I squared times R. So that could be useful, for example, if we were given some kind of electric circuit. We didn't know the voltage, but we knew the resistance and we knew the current, and we wanted to find out the power being drawn. We could use this arrangement of, of um, Watt's law to do that. Similarly, again, if we arrange um, Ohm's law such that I is equal to V divided by R, then we can insert that expression for I into Watt's law, and then we get P is equal to V times V over R, which works out to be V squared R. Again, we may have some kind of circuit example where we're told the voltage, we're told the resistance, and we don't know the current, and we want to quickly find out, um, find out the power requirements based on that. Now, in a resistive circuit, what's actually happening is that the electrons are flowing through the resistor. As we know, a resistor opposes um, a flow of current, and the greater the resistance, the, um, the lower the current flowing in a circuit for a fixed voltage. And what happens is that the electrons that are fl flowing through this resistive material are basically um, colliding more frequently and they're producing heat as a result. And the heat is dissipated um, through the resistor as energy and through uh, an energy conversion process. And what you'll find is that basically the energy um, going into a resistor is greater than the energy coming out of the resistor, such that the, basically the change in energy from the, uh, where the current flows into the resistor and where the current flows out of the resistor is due to this conversion process where the energy is being dissipated as heat from the resistor. There is a relationship between, between the amount of current that flows through the resistor and the, um, the amount of energy and of course the amount of power and that's given in terms of this expression here which is P is equal to I squared R which is the one we just saw. So the greater the current flowing through the resistor and depending on the resistance value the more power um, will be given off and the power that will be dissipated um, through that um, resistor is, is related to the current and the resistance itself. So if we look at a couple of, of examples here and um, we can see the same circuit but with different values being used and we can use our alternative versions of Watt's law to calculate the power being dissipated in each circuit. So um, I suppose at the very simple example we have P is equal to VI and this case here um, we can just multiply V multiply by I which will give us the value for power and again you can calculate the value of power for these other two circuits here simply using the alternative um, expressions for P, which is um, I squared times R, or um, v, v squared divided by R. Now, resistors will give off heat in the, um, as it's dissipated from, from the resistance, from the resistor itself, but certain types of resistors 
will only be able, able to give off certain amounts of heat. And it's actually related to the size of the resistor. So you can imagine that um, a small resistor, if you start to pass a large amount of current through it, and it's trying to um, dissipate um, some energy, and there's certain power related to that energy, um, that it will have a certain capability based on the size of it. So putting a large current through a small resistance may result in issues. And that's because different types of resistors have what's called different power ratings. The power ratings basically are related to the surface area of the resistor in terms of how much heat it can actually dissipate. So a small resistor has a small amount of surface area and can only dissipate a small amount of heat. And as a result, it will basically fail under, um, under large values of power applied to it. Whereas the larger resistor shown here at the top basically has a larger um, surface area to dissipate heat from. So the definition of a power rating basically is the maximum amount of power that the resistor can dissipate and it's directly related to the surface area. So the larger uh, resistors shown here at the top will have a larger power rating and the smaller resistors at the bottom will have a smaller power rating.